Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Christy Rangis with Sean Cole. So today we're going to talk about something that's been almost a year and a half in the making. A very long time when you think about do-it-yourself projects. Sean, what the heck took you so long? <laughs> failure after failure after <laughs> failure. And then I got to move on to other stuff. So it's like... True. True. I, I started it. Man. Yeah, there you go. So these were built by Sean. These weren't. <laughs> so there's so many different boxes on the market. What would make you decide to put so much time and effort and even money into making your own? Why wouldn't you just go out and buy one already done? That's a great question. I, the main reason is a forum post that we'd seen in the iRacing forums that utilized this Arduino board. And these things are like 20 bucks. Throw some LEDs on it, throw some buttons on it, throw it in a container, and you've got a button box. So it was gonna be cheap. It was going to be do it yourself and yeah that was the reason so is this essentially this is phase one yes then. so i guess you know tell me what what did you do to get this i mean besides just going and buying this ship i mean talk to me about the process that took and how long that took this was very difficult and way over my head to be honest with you so this board you start with the board you have to buy some microchips you have to buy some resistors you have to buy all the buttons and things you literally i had to make my own circuit board to make this thing work and believe it or not I got it all up and running, had the LEDs all working, everything. You have to like make code to make it work. Got it all working because there are great instructions by Fernando to follow along. But the problem got to be with the buttons, the inputs, and I couldn't get the inputs working. You had to use a joy to key or something, and that got to be very complicated. And then that's when I had to just kind of stop with the project. And then that led to just going into a completely different route. So Sean, how much time did you put into this? <laughs> I put in at least, at least 20 hours of hard work getting it all right. And it was very confusing. It took everything out of my brain to then have to throw it out, basically. That must have been incredibly frustrating. So phase two, how'd you get away from this? Yeah, got away from that, which was <laughs> nice. This, I, I will say this project would have worked. And if I could have put another 20 hours into just this version, I probably could have got it running, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. But then I thought there's an easier option. I can call my buddies at Sim Projects and get some controllers that make life a little easier. And I actually was able to up things a little bit. And instead of having just the gear indicator, which was the original design, I was able to also add a three digit and a six digit display, which this version was not going to have. It was only going to have this display. Interesting. So it got better with the second version. So you assembled this whole thing. Sean did this whole thing. What got you to phase three? What what made you move from this? <laughs> this looks pretty good to me. Because I don't read instructions. That is, the, <laughs> honestly, that's why there's a phase three. Phase two, like I said, I called Sim Projects. I ordered boards that were going to take care of this. One of the boards involved me making this like matrix of buttons. And I don't know if anybody's ever done a matrix of buttons. It's super, it's like this zigzag of, Oh my God, it took me forever to get it done to find out that with the kind of buttons I wanted to use, I couldn't use the controller that I needed. And so when I contacted them, they're like, well, why didn't you get this controller instead? And so that, and then the other problem, that if, if that wasn't enough, I actually broke this display when I was putting it together. So I had to get another one of those. So that's kind of why we ended up with phase three, which was another new board and a new display. Right, and Darren and I have heard so much complaining about this. So talk to me about finally getting it to work. That must have been so great. This is one of the best victories of my life, having <laughs> this project finally done. I think we've mentioned on the show like 20 times, oh, we're getting into the Arduino box and it just never. So having this done is awesome. And I will say, I designed this exactly how I wanted it to be, so I'm very proud of it overall, and I'm looking forward to being able to use it. Well, it looks pretty good, and uh, it's definitely working now. So when we come back from this commercial, we'll find out how much it took to make one of these in terms of cost, and we'll also find out how it was on the sim right after this. GT Chassis Racing Rigs provided by Human Racing. Go to humanracing.co.th. The T500 RS wheel and pedal set from Thrustmaster, officially licensed by Sony in Gran Turismo 5 and designed for the most die-hard racing fans. It has unmatched power and precision, it's backlash free and totally responsive. With this wheel and pedal set, users will go farther than ever before in their racing experience. To find out where to purchase the T500 RS, visit www.thrustmaster.com. 
Welcome back to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Christy Rankies with Sean Cole. We're reviewing his do-it-yourself box that he made. <laughs> <laughs> Took him almost over a year to make this. So how much money did you spend over the course of this year and a half? Well, it started out with the inexpensive project. Right. So, you know, that was like a $20 board and some things. I was able to reuse all the LEDs. Anyway, I spent over $150 in my version. But if I had known what I was going to do, if you follow my final version, I only spent about $90 on the box as it sits in your hands. Yeah, so, and that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. How long would it take, you know, someone like me necessarily to make something like this? Have you ever soldered? How long I would, would it take a I wouldn't recommend, person? No, 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 I wouldn't recommend it for you then. If you've not soldered before, I mean, this wouldn't be where I'd try to learn to solder. It was it was okay. pretty complicated. There was a lot of wiring due, and it was complicated. So it's going to take 10 hours for somebody with skill, and it would probably take a lot 40. longer. Yeah, 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 for someone who doesn't have skills. So, Sean, let's put this on a scale. One to five. Five being someone who has a lot of skill in doing do-it-yourself projects. One being someone like me who doesn't typically do do-it-yourself projects. What number would it be? I'd probably put it at about a four. So definitely pretty difficult there. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be one of the harder projects one's going to take on in sim racing. Hmm, interesting. So what about the pros of this box versus, you know, just buying one? The pros are the sense of accomplishment. Like I said, I had a lot of fun. I love building stuff. So despite making mistakes and the failures here and there, it was still a lot of fun. Um, you got to customize it however you wanted. Exactly. I mean, the layout was specifically made the way I wanted. Another pro is being able to select your own buttons. So you can see I went with a variety of different shapes, types of buttons, and that we it's gonna make it easier to remember what each button does. So when I'm not trying to look, I'll just know the toggle button does this or the big red does that. Right, and it's also cheaper to make one yourself, even though yeah. you have to consider time, but yeah. it's cheaper than just buying one already made. Absolutely, I came in at under 100 and just a normal button box will usually be at about 100 maybe a little less, but, and then the fancier you get, I mean, you could spend two, three hundred dollars on a complicated right. one. And then it'll work with pretty much any PC. Yeah, absolutely. So Sean, tell me what it's like when you're actually using it, because we've talked about the build of it, but what about when you're actually, you know, using it in a sim? Okay, well, some of that overlaps with what we just talked about, but I built this layout specific to my needs as a sim racer. So I knew that I wanted, for example, the gear indicator, and I wanted that at the top. So I purposely made it because that was the, the one that I was going to need the most of the displays. So when I compare it to like other displays, I don't know if their layout is the way they want, but for me, it was gear indicator was the most important. And then same thing with the other things, the other displays as well. It was a matter of priority and what did I need most easily seen. So that that is something that for me is a big pro and why I would want to do a do-it-yourself box and getting it customized just like that. What about the LED LCDs? Um, the LEDs are actually, they're good, but they're not quite as nice as most of the others that I see from the guys. I don't know if it's the quality of the LEDs that you can get at Radio Shack, which is just sort of an average, you know, electron, electronics parts store, or maybe it's because I didn't go with the little rings that kind of make it nicer make it brighter, but right. functionally they're exactly where i want and they do the job really well so sean let's compare this box to the one that it's that's most similar to it that one the red one and you did customize this one in fact as well so this wasn't a cookie cutter one that you just got you customized it to where all the buttons were where you wanted them Compare that one to this one, how much did this one cost? How much did this one cost? Okay, well, well, like you said, this is customized, but it was made by them. So actually, if we compare them, this is actually really good. If you look, my LEDs, they're pretty straight, but there's a little bit of just a <laughs> little bit of wobble. And you can see everything's a lot better aligned on that box, but you're looking at two to $300, depending on how many features you build into this. And the guys at Lane Sim Products, they'll make it any way you want. So this design was specific to what I asked for. So, and you can see it's quite a bit nicer as far as finish goes. Now, I will say I learned from this one and I was able to add the displays, which makes this one a little bit even more dramatic or a little bit more beneficial in terms of information. Right, I mean, when I got here and we were looking at these and I didn't know which one was Sean's and which one he bought, and he asked me which one, you know, I could kind of tell, you know, mostly because of the way that this wasn't completely cut straight. I, th I think it's a nice box, but I still think this one's a little bit better. Um, you know, let's talk about the cons and the cons of this, and that's definitely one of them. And to be fair, that is the first con. You know what, you can see where my like, blade got a little crazy there. <laughs> so I have a little extra nick there. None of my squares are that perfect. We mentioned the LEDs not being lined up. So 
I am not a pro. I don't have any machinery to be doing it at that level. And you know, the guys, whether it's this or the Derek Spear box, you can see just that, that finished quality element that they have that I could not duplicate. Maybe I'll get there. Rev scale, one to 10, what do you think? Um, I'm gonna give this box a, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 in function because it's exactly what I wanted it to be. And it functions perfectly the way you wanted it. Yeah. Okay. But with my inability to give it that polished finish, <laughs> it, it still needs some So some it's work. an eight or nine in that category. That, that's fair. Okay, any thoughts really on the project before we wrap things up? Um, I had a lot of fun with it. It's, you know, these kind of projects, especially for a sim racer, it's a way to take yourself to that next level. Button boxes, if you're running a triple screen, are, are a necessity. Having some kind of extra displays when you're on a triple screen, you've got to have it because the view, the field of view, removes all of the dashboard. So this does become your only reference for like shift lights or gear indicators, things like that. So it was very important to me to get a box like that. Um, nobody really makes this box. You know, with that input and outputs all in one and gives me everything. So I kind of accomplished something that nobody else has done yet. I'm sure somebody will get to it eventually, but I like that as well. And again, it was cheap. So cheap, fun, super functional. I love it. Yeah. Well, on that note, you can take part and maybe make your own box. We're going to have a whole topic on our threads on our website all about this. So please take part and give your suggestions. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, give us your feedback. Thanks for watching. I'm Christy Rangis, Sean Cole. Keep watching.